Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about adaptation. This is my favorite subject to talk about. Now it might sound a bit dry, but it's actually more important than anything else I'll ever talk about or you'll ever hear from me. So please stay tuned, okay? Why is it so important? Adaptation is really the secret to preventing running injuries and rehabilitating from any running injury, no matter what kind of running injury we're talking about here. Okay? Now, what is adaptation? What am I talking about here? We have to kind of, before I can unpack what adaptation is, I need, need to define a few terms. And one of them is um, load. Okay? So if we think about something like a car, and you think about the suspension in your car, um, when we apply a load to that, um, that structure, right? you use your car, you're going over bumps and things like that, um, you're putting load through the suspension. You could say you're putting stress on the suspension, but load is the word I'm going to use. Okay? And what happens is the more that you use your car, the more that you use the suspension, the more load you put through it, the sooner it'll wear out. Okay? And that makes sense because that's a mechanical system. And it was basically like a wear and tear thing. The more you use it, the, the sooner it'll wear out. The, the thing is, is that the human body's not like that at all, really. We're not a mechanical system, we're a biological system. We actually respond to load, mechanical load, quite differently. So if you think about the example of someone like a, a weightlifter, when they go to the gym and lift weights, what they're doing is loading their muscles. So as they load their muscles, they apply a stimulus, okay? Uh, the stimulus being the heavy load, and then they go home and go to sleep. And while they're asleep, the body thinks, well, that was quite a heavy stimulus. If he's going to keep doing this, we're going to have to make him stronger so he can break something. So that's why the muscles get bigger and stronger. But what we don't often think about is that it's not just the muscles that change, okay? It's all of the tissues, right? So the other term that we need to get familiar with is um, tissue, right? So a tissue is like an umbrella term. It means um, what everything in the body is like a tissue. So that muscles are a tissue, bones are a tissue, ligaments are a tissue, joint cartilage is a tissue, tendon is a tissue. All of these things, and when we get injured, we're usually injuring some kind of tissue, depending on which type, right? So, all of the tissues of the body are going to respond to mechanical stress or mechanical load, and um, depending on how much load is applied and how strong they are, okay? So, what we're going to talk about is the, to try and illustrate this point, I'm going to talk about the tissue on the back of the kneecap, all right? The reason being is that, um, Runner's knee is a really, really common problem for runners. It's actually the most prevalent running injury. And runner's knee is when the tissue on the back of the kneecap starts to hurt. And that's because when I bend my knee a little bit, I put a load, I put pressure on the back of my kneecap. If I put too much pressure on it, it starts to become painful, okay? So, the tissue on the back of the kneecap is alive, similar to all other tissues in the body, right? So this is why this concept of adaptation applies not just to the, the kneecap example that I'm going to discuss, it also applies to like plantar fascia, um, your Achilles tendon, quadriceps tendon, hamstring tendons, your gluteal tendons, and bursa around the lateral hip. So all of those things, any running injury you can pretty much think of, stress fractures, bones, right, tibia, um, tibial bone is a tissue. All of those things are tissues that respond to load in exactly the same way. So if we can understand this concept in terms of um, the, the knee, the kneecap. We can understand it as it applies to any running injury, okay? So, if we take the example and in the um, description of this video I've linked a blog I wrote and I talk about um, this imaginary runner called Dave, okay? Now Dave has a bit of a trouble with runner's knee, okay? The tissue on the back of his kneecap becomes painful when he runs too much, okay? Now what's been happening if we think about the load that is placed on the tissue when Dave does say a 20k run or a 30k run, right? It's, it's higher if the run is longer. The, the load that's placed on the kneecap is higher. So what I've drawn here, the max, the red line, is the most amount of load that that kneecap tissue can tolerate right now. Any more than that and it'll become painful, okay? The green line is the minimum required to apply a stimulus, so the minimum load required to apply a stimulus to cause the kneecap to become stronger, to cause it to adapt, okay? So, let's say over Christmas, Dave doesn't do too much, right? And we represent his activity levels as the blue line down here. So he's only running sort of between 10 and 20K over the Christmas period, but he wants to train for a marathon in the spring, right? So what's happening is he's not doing as much right now, so the body thinks, well, 
There's not running so much. So that tissue on the back of the kneecap, that doesn't need my attention. That doesn't need to become stronger or more resilient. So I'm not going to waste energy making things stronger that don't need to be. So I'm going to let the kneecap decondition a bit, right? This is deconditioning. What happens is the, the red and green lines move down to fit with where the activity levels are. Okay, that makes sense. But then when January comes around, he's like, oh, well, I've got to start training again. And he heads out and he does like a 35 kilometers in a week. And this is where the, the pain flares up, right? So this is the point where he comes in to see physio because his knee is starting to hurt. The tissue on the back of his kneecap has had too much load applied to it in too short a space of time, and now it's become painful, okay? So as you would do, he starts doing less. His activity level comes down, where he's barely doing any running at all, and maybe even completely resting. And this is where he comes in to see the physio, right? So his, his um, red and green lines are still quite low, and the physio says, well, what happened over Christmas when you were running less is your tissue on the back of your kneecap deconditioned, right? It became less tolerant. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply some load to it, but not too much, but not too little, okay? So he heads out and he starts doing runs every week, but not too much, but not too little. The near the red line, the near the most amount of load that he can put on his kneecap, but they're not above it, they're just very close to it, right? So we might be talking about 15k run, and then a 20k run, and then a 25k run, right? Or it might be a different amount to that, but the amount is within his adaptive zone, right? The adaptive zone being between the red and green lines, not too much and not too little. If he accidentally goes above the red line, it will be painful. If he doesn't run enough and his activity is below the green line, then he'll get weaker. The kneecap tissue will adapt and get weaker, right? So what we're trying to do is get near the red line, but not above it. And what will happen is that the kneecap will be applied a stimulus that's not too much, not too little, and they'll start to adapt to that, right? So when he goes to sleep at night, the body will think, well, I'm gonna make that kneecap tissue stronger and more resilient because he keeps running. So I need to make it stronger so that it can tolerate that. And what happens over the next few weeks is he doesn't go above the red line, he goes very close to it. The kneecap responds and adapts. And the capacity of the kneecap increases until a 35 kilometer week is actually not a problem anymore. So he doesn't get pain anymore now because his red and green lines have moved up. The, the capacity of the kneecap to tolerate 35k in a week has, has um, it's sort of adapted to that and it can tolerate that. It couldn't before because it had deconditioned over the, the sort of period where he wasn't doing as much activity, right? But not only that, it keeps going. 40K, 42K, 50K. Steadily increasing all the time. Not too much, not too little. His kneecap gets stronger and stronger. And then he gets ready for his marathon and he's good to go, right? So this is why it's very important that we don't deload too much and during, say, down periods like the winter and things like that. Don't drop your volume too much. Don't drop your intensity too much because your tissues will adapt to that. They'll, be get, they'll become weaker. And you've got to build them up very, very slowly, which is where those rules like the 10% rule, I right? don't run more than 10% more than you did the last week. It's because we're trying to stay within this zone, okay? Between the red and green lines. It's called the adaptive zone. That's what I call it anyway. And the goal and any good physiotherapy rehab program for any injury, whether it be the knee, or the Achilles tendon, or the plantar fascia, or a stress fracture, or a bursitis, or whatever, it's to apply load to those tissues that's not too much, not too little, and progressively increase it so that the tissue adapts until it can do what you want it to be able to do. Okay? The secret to rehabilitating any injury, the secret to preventing any injury, is to find your adaptive zone and live within it, okay? And a couple of tricks to help you find the adaptive zone, right? Say you do have pain at the minute, and when you run, it hurts, right? If, if, it, if it gets worse, the more you do, right? And it's quite painful, and the next day it's more painful than it was the day before, that's probably above the red line, okay? If you don't feel anything at all, you might be below the green line, you might need to push a bit. Right? So that gives you some idea of how to find it if you're rehabilitating from an injury. 
if you're not rehabilitating from an injury, then you just want to avoid big spikes, right? You see there you went for a 35k run a week when he was on 20k a week the week before, right? So you want to avoid big spikes if you're not injured at the minute. And this is the trick. It's simple, but it's not easy. Finding the adaptive zone and staying within it is the key to preventing and rehabilitating all injuries. And it's much more important than anything else I can possibly teach you. So hopefully that makes sense. If anyone has any questions, please do leave them in the comments and check out the blog where I sort of go through this in a bit more detail and use some, um, some images to kind of uh, unpack it a little bit more, which is in the description to this video. All right, hope that's helpful. Thank you.